little more than a month ago, there had been a lot of news about fears of a recession. Those fears have rescinded a bit in recent weeks because of new developments, including rate cuts, continued historically low unemployment, and some movement in the trade talks with China. In addition, the Dow Jones Industrial Average just hit a new record, breaking 28,000 at the close of business on Friday. Carolee McGrath spoke with Matthew Farkas, the Vice President of Fixed Income at St. Germain Investments, who breaks it all down for us. And full disclosure, St. Germain Investments are a sponsor of WGBY's Murrow Gala event. The fears about a recession have receded somewhat. Really what's driving it there, I point to three main things. The source of concern really has been, uh, the epicenter of concerns around recession has generated from the China trade war that's been going on. And there's been some optimism that's come about in terms of, one, it looks like it's not going to get worse, so each side's not going to continue to escalate it and do a tit-for-tat by raising tariffs. Um, and two, it, it also looks like there's going to be um, some sort of uh, a deal. They're calling it a skinny deal or a phase one deal. Um, so optimism around getting some resolution in, in uh, the trade dispute um, is, is, is a huge thing. Um, it definitely removes a big piece of uncertainty that's been hanging over uh, the markets and uh, the economy. Um, two, I would also point to uh, Brexit. Um, so it's a global economy. Things that happen overseas in England and the UK certainly impact us. Um, there had been a concern overhanging the market that there would be a, a quote unquote hard Brexit there, um, which would be really disruptive, I think, for global trade. Um, that, at least for the time being, has been, uh, the risk of that has, has, has come down qu quite a bit. Um, and uh, so that's a positive thing for the, for the global economy as well. And then three, I would point to uh, the Federal Reserve being proactive in cutting interest rates. Um, so the Fed has cut uh, three quarters of one percent this year. They just cut last month. Um, and, um, you know, lowering interest rates has a tremendous ripple effect in, in the economy um, as they cut their interest rate that lowers prime rate. Um, um, mortgage rates are also sort of loosely connected to what the, fe the Fed rate as well. Um, and, and mortgage rates are at right near all time lows. And talk a little bit about the inverted yield curve, because I know that that was something that people yeah. were talking about as a big concern or an indicator of a potential recession. But that number has shifted since. Yeah, yeah. So an inverted yield curve, for those who don't know, it's, it's kind of a bond market, bond jargon term. Um, all that really means is that short-term interest rates are higher than long-term rates. Um, so people point to different terms to kind of get a sense of that. Uh, what's common is to look at maybe what the two-year U.S. government treasury rate is versus the 10-year government um, bond. Flashback a few months ago, you could get more um, yield or interest on an annualized basis for a two-year bond than you could a 10-year bond, and that's an inverted yield curve. Um, that's that's typically um, a sign of a few things. It's a sign that the markets think that the Fed has rates too high and that the Fed should cut their policy rate. Um, and then also it's been a pretty good, pretty reliable indicator of a recession coming. So if you go back to um, you know, post-World War II, prior to every recession, um, the yield curve has inverted and it's only had one false signal. So it's got a pretty good batting average of being a recession predictor. Um, the predicting the timing of the recession is, is, is a little bit fuzzier um, and not, it doesn't have a, you know, this happens and three months later we enter recession right. kind of batting average. But it, historically when that happens, you know, investors, um, you know, generally kind of sit up and pay attention because it has such a, a good history of predicting recessions. But that number um, reverted. Did it not? It's it's yeah it's it's disinverted and so right now you can um, kind of a more natural um, yield curve is is out there so you get less interest for two year than ten year. Um, I would point out that um, you know this is kind of following the script of previous recessions. So typically what would happen is the yield curve would invert, then uninvert, and then you hit the recession. So from just that standpoint alone. I wouldn't say, you know, it's, it's uninverted, we've, we've dodged a bullet and the recession is, is not going to happen. So talk a little bit about um, just the stock market in particular yeah. reaching record highs. Um, I think the start of Friday was 27,900 for the Dow. So this is, you know, part of what everybody is talking about and certainly excited about in the stock market. Um, I would say, you know, overall, 
it's been a, what, what market participants would call a risk-on environment over the last few months. So as recession fears have abated a little bit, that encourages a little bit more um, um, risk-on investing. And so investors have been moving you know, money into the stock market in, in response to the things that we were just talking about. Um, but again, I wouldn't necessarily, you know, when the stock market is high, it, it is, um, it does have a nice ripple effect in terms of, um, you know, people feel a little bit more confident. Um, when people are more confident, um, they're a little bit more willing to maybe buy that car or um, buy that first home or maybe trade up to a second home. So it definitely has positive ripple effects. Um, but, I, but I also would not read too much into short-term movements into the stock market um, because they can be, a, you know, things can move both on the up and the downside, um, can move quickly and for sometimes reasons that um, when you really peel back the onion don't make a ton of sense. Okay. Now, I'm not saying that that's the case now, but um, it, it, it just more of don't read too much into it. Talk a little bit about the housing market. I know you had mentioned, you know, that the Fed's cut the rate and certainly mortgage rates are around 3.75, yeah. which is uh, pretty cheap. You know, if you're buying, you know, your first house or you're trying to refinance. Talk a little bit about that and what you see in, in 2020. Will we still see um, similar numbers? So the housing market, I think, has a, a number of positives that are going for it. Um, yeah, you hit the nail right on the head. Um, mortgage rates are right near the lowest they've ever been. Um, so in terms of buying that new house, that interest burden is, 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 is quite low. So that's a positive. I would also point to the unemployment market, or the, the employment market, I should say. The unemployment rate is, is at a 50-year low. Um, we're seeing wages um, starting to, to pick up. Um, they're growing at the highest rate in nearly a decade right now. Um, and the consumer, on average and aggregate, is in pretty good shape financially. Um, not they've learned some lessons from you know where we were 10 years ago in, in the credit crisis and, and, and some of the um, you know the bad things that happened then. Um, you know the debt burdens on average are quite low um, relative to historical levels. Saving rates are ticking up a little bit. So those three things um, I, I think are positive for the housing market going forward. That's not to say it's all roses. Um, I, I would point out that you know nationally um, certainly there's a shortage of affordable housing out there. Um, developers are not really building as many kind of starter homes as they used to, kind of at least in previous periods. Right. Um, they tend to be focusing more on the higher end home. So if you're just trying to buy that first home, there's just, there's just less available out there. There's less inventory out there. Um, and two, I would point out that you know, millennials also and, and younger people generally mm -hmm. also, um, you know, they're dealing with debts that previous generations didn't have. So, you know, student loan debt can be um, a, a big weight over somebody's head in terms of being able to buy um, in, into a mortgage. Essentially, they already have a mortgage coming out of college right. that they have to take care of first. And then three, I would point to, um, you know, society's view of housing may be shifting a little bit. Um, and people may be less eager to buy that house, um, particularly, you know, they may have seen what happened to their parents mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, 10 years ago. Um, and ha maybe having a house that's worth less than what the mortgage is or, you know, worst right. case, losing their home. Um, and that those kind of things can have long-lasting impacts um, throughout someone's life. So um, they might not be willing to buy that, buy that house, get that mortgage um, for the, the pain that they've seen, and, and maybe personally or maybe, um, you know, through family, friends, et cetera. So the Fed's cut um, rates three times since July, and, and certainly some people say, you know, that's not a good policy to follow. Um, you know, what's your take on that? So, yeah, the Fed has cut rates. Um, I, I, to the yield curve, as we were talking about before, the yield curve was inverted. So the, I think the markets were, as I was saying, were strongly indicating that the Fed's rate was too high and that the Fed needed to cut their, their rate in order to get it to more of a, a, equal li a level that makes sense for the markets. It's right. probably a better way to say that. Um, you know, anytime you lower interest rates, there's there's some good and some bad with it. Um, you know, I'll start with the bad in, in terms of, you know, lowering the Fed rate, lower savings accounts, rate interest that you get on CDs, so that, you know, anybody that has a lot of savings, there's less safe income available out there. Um, so that's, that is a negative. Um, but it also has positive effects. It lowers prime rate, so any, any debt that you have that kind of floats to prime, maybe a home equity loan or a credit card, um, those rates should come down when the Fed cuts their rate. Um, and in addition, 
lower rates, um, if, if rates, rates are low for mortgages, which they are right now. Um, you know, mortgages, um, excuse me, housing in general is a, is a big part of the economy, and if we can get the housing market to, um, to pick up. And in, in, in the fall, we did admittedly see housing slow down a little bit. When mortgage rates were approaching 5%, that seemed to be a level that um, we saw existing home sales come back a little bit. Um, mortgage applications were starting to drop when, when rates were there. So with lower rates, um, you get the housing market going, there's a ripple effect. People buy a new home, um, you know, they might need to get new furniture, they might need to get all kinds of new service, services for that home. So there's a tremendous um, positive multiplier effect that happens when housing gets lifted.